Thanks very much, Catherine. Next up, we have Ross Brown of the blog The Brown Noser. It's a place where he likes to tell his own stories about memories, friends, share his photography, and sometimes even review a beer. Um, his first novel is available here tonight at back. It's called Something Name, A Korea Diary. I was four, maybe five, but I remember. His name was Jeremy, a young explorer, an adventurer. He lived a few doors down in the townhouse community on Bow Hill Avenue, behind the Kmart and Dominion Plaza. Our homes were separated from the shopping center by a field that had a small wooded grove where the neighborhood teens land, Hippie Hideout it was called. A creek ran the length of the plaza from Meadowlands to Viewmount and beyond past Maribel High School. That was our territory. Jeremy and I would explore Hippie Hideout during the day when the teens were at school. Broken bottles of 50, Blue, and X obtained illegally from the beer store by someone who was willing to buy for underage drinkers. Cigarette butts, pieces of burnt wood. A plastic milk case or two, obviously swiped from the back of the Dominion grocery store. My friend and I ran through the much trodden paths trying to secure a small spot of our own, leaving Hot Wheels cars with plastic army soldiers to keep guard. Jeremy was fearless and always wanted to explore further. We wandered the paths of our garden home community looking for other kids to play with. We explored the rocks and broken concrete of the rubble pile that would later become Chesterton Towers. We walked down the far end of Bow Hill to Chesterton Drive, where we discovered the slides and swings of General Burns Park. It wasn't our first time there. Our mothers had walked us there before, had taken us to the wading pool during the summer. I don't know why I couldn't play with Jeremy that one day. I do remember seeing him when he came to my door that morning, wanting to play, wanting to explore. I can't remember if I was sick, if I had chores or a meal to eat, or an appointment to go to. I just remember seeing his smiling face, his mischievous grin, asking me to come out with him. And I couldn't go. I'll see you later, I told him before closing the door. I don't remember if it was later that day or the next day when I finally went to call on Jeremy to see if he still wanted to play. But I do remember what happened when I knocked on Jeremy's door. Jeremy's mom, who was always nice to me, was tearful when she opened the door. When she saw me and knew why I was there, she choked down sobs. Jeremy can't come out. He's not here. There's been an accident. And then the door closed, and I could hear loud sobs and voices of other people on the other side of the door. Jeremy was not afraid to explore on his own. He'd been chased away from Hippie Hyda many times before. The teens teens screaming after him, telling him to keep out from their tor territory, that they'd kill him if they caught him again. Other times he would come running home, shivering, having slipped into the ice-cold creek and getting soaked to the waist. Because I couldn't go out with him, Jeremy had gone exploring on his own. He'd gone far, had gone all the way to General Burns Park. He had most likely played on the swings and on the slide. He wouldn't have gone into the waiting pool because on that day and that hour, the wooden gate would have been closed and locked. The wooden fence would have blocked Jeremy's view. But the fence to the larger, deeper pool, the pool for grown-ups, was chain-linked. Jeremy was a climber, and his curiosity had got the better of him that day. Because I was a kid, I didn't get all the details. I didn't know when or how someone found him at the bottom of the pool. I didn't know if he had been found at the bottom of the deep end or the shallow end, but that didn't matter. For Jeremy, all parts of that pool were deep ends. I wish I had a time machine. I would go back to that day. I would show up at my house on Bow Hill before Jeremy knocked on my door, and I would walk him back to his house. I would tell his mother to keep him indoors that day to wait for the younger me to join him. 
Would I have prevented Jeremy from going that far? Maybe he would have waited until I could join him, until we could go off to General Burns Park together. And maybe there would have been two young bodies at the bottom of the pool that day. Because I followed Jeremy everywhere. If I had a time machine, I would return to that date. I would keep at a distance while Jeremy knocked on my door. When he set off on his own, I would follow him from a distance. I would let Jeremy play in the park until he grew bored. I would even let him climb that fence. But I would have climbed the fence and gone after him when he got too close to the pool. I would race to the pool when he looked like he was about to follow him. And I would save him.